Hi everyone, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome to a series where actually we're going to do several DVDs upon painting clouds. This is the first one. There are some simple painting techniques for clouds. And I've always wanted to do this, but I don't know quite how to approach a DVD like this. I've been thinking about it actually for a couple of years. I've been doing a lot of cloud studies. Some of you that follow me on my blog and follow me on uh, Facebook and stuff have seen some of the beautiful pictures of clouds that I've taken from around the world in the last couple of years. I post them up there and we discuss them just a little bit. But uh, artists, the, the problem is you have so many generations of artists that capture clouds so differently. And, you know, what is it that I like to paint? I'm not really sure. I've painted everything from, you know, simple canal boat, puffy little clouds, uh, folk art clouds, to uh, in-depth clouds, to studying a beer stat, and um, Louis Aston Knight, we've done several of his, um, Thomas Moran, you know, John Constable. I mean, I've looked at all of these beautiful painters and they all develop a technique and they all develop clouds and paintings a little differently. So how do we go about approaching this? The thing is, what I have to do is to teach you how to see a cloud. And then as you start to study other artists and other techniques, is to learn that how are they seeing that cloud and how are they capturing that cloud as a part and is the visual effect within their painting okay so we're going to take a look at quite a few concepts in uh, this dvd and then we're going to look at some simple things uh, to simple techniques you can use to capture some of these effects okay um, and we'll look at some of the philosophies behind uh, some of these uh, different techniques but there is so many that we just cannot do it all within the two and a half hours of this DVD, or we'll try to stretch it to three as uh, much as we can to get in uh, to this particular DVD. So when we're going to start our study of clouds, uh, you know, what do we do first? Do we learn how to see a cloud, or do we go back and take a look at through history? And I thought about that, and I'm going to take you back first, take you a look through history. Then we'll go into seeing what is a cloud, some of the different types of clouds, how to, how to uh, see a cloud. And uh, then we're going to have to talk about linear perspective, perspective within the clouds, so they're so important. And then we'll start to show some of the different techniques. Now, the problem is with presenting it in any way that I have thought about presenting this is that by the time you get to the end of the DVD, you're going to see stuff that you're going to have to go back and watch this again because you'll see things a little different and you'll see my discussion different. So I highly suggest that you watch this several times, okay? I'll try not to be boring, but we'll watch this several times because each time you see it and as your eye becomes attuned to seeing more and more and more, as you go back and watch it again, you're gonna see more and your eye will see more and you'll understand better. So you're gonna have to watch this several times, okay? Let's go back. First, let's go back into history. Let's take a look at just a couple of artists. I don't want to overwhelm you with lots of them because I've painted lots of them. We'll look at just a couple because we're going to look at some simple techniques. We'll look at just a couple that are very influential. And then we'll take a look at some clouds, okay? So first what I want to do is I'm going to take you back. And I'm going to take you back over to the Netherlands. And I'm going to take you, I went over to the Netherlands and went through all the museums all throughout Europe. I've been through many of the museums throughout Europe. And one painter that, um, you know, styles of painters, the Dutch, the Dutch masters, really stand out. And Van Rijstal really, really stands out. And uh, he does a lot of different paintings. And I saw this original over in Europe. And the thing of philosophy about the Dutch, and here's got these magnificent clouds. And one of the things that I, I just want to open your eyes to start to look at about clouds in a painting is the philosophy about the application of clouds. And in here, in this particular painting, when you're looking at Van Rijstal, you'll see that the horizon line is lower. Okay, the horizon line is lower across the bottom of the painting here. So two-thirds, a good two-thirds of the, even a little bit more than that, um, of the painting is in sky. And the lower third of it here is in, uh, is in the land. And so in the Dutch philosophy was that the sky was the most important 
part of the painting. And they were a small, flat, near, uh, small country, very, very flat. And so they didn't have magnificent mountains like you see Bierstadt and, and Thomas Moran and some of these others painting. Um, and so they would they would paint the land very small and the skies, the magnificent skies, so big. And when I was over there, I took hundreds of, of photos of clouds and sun rays coming through that were magnificent, absolutely magnificent. And the skies were magnificent. And why? Because the land is so flat. And so you get these magnificent skies. And to portray that, the artist created a tremendous amount of interest within the skies and, very, and, and a little bit less interest within the ground. And they have something that we're going to be pointing out in several of the things. He has a journey path here between, look how big and wide this cloud is right through here, and then how it narrows down and comes back to this visual point. His vanishing point in his painting is way back here. And his visual journey is taking you this way. And these clouds are all narrowing down and pointing to this visual journey where everything is taking you back here. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to do a special little section in here called Perspective. And we're going to show you that you can use clouds to help you have visual perspective. And we'll talk about that. But Van Rice, all you look at this, you have these, these beautiful... Now, this is an evening uh, set here. You have the... Uh, the light source coming up from the left here. And you see the light to the shadow expressed here under the windmill. And it's expressed also into the cloud that's here. Here's the light side and here's the shadow side of the cloud. Here's the light side and here's the shadow side of the cloud. So clouds are going to carry light sources and everything exactly the same as objects within a landscape. Depending upon the position of the sun, you know, is, is, is going to show how much you're going to see it. This is a little bit more towards the evening time. And so the uh, sun, the light would be expressed a little bit stronger. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we get going. But the Dutch, one thing I wanted to show you about the Dutch is they have these magnificent, powerful skies. And part of that is because of the philosophies in which they do uh, their painting. This is another Dutch painter here. And again, look at the visual journey in the clouds that this, this artist sets up. Look at the powerful darks, use of light and dark uh, within the cloud here. And uh, look at the dark cloud sitting in front of the light clouds here. And that was opposite of me. When I was first started painting and learning, I always learned that dark objects go back, light objects go front. And so it never seemed possible for me to put a dark cloud in front of a light cloud. As we go through this DVD and I show you all these pictures, I want you to to dispel that in your mind right now. I want you to look at how many times in nature you see a dark cloud right in front of a light cloud. It happens over half the time. So, uh, you know, that's something that you're going to have to paint. So when I but when I first started painting, I always put puffy white clouds, dark clouds in the back, and white, white, white clouds in the front. That doesn't always happen. And so we need to, to look at that. But again, here is a lower landscape part. The, the land here is lower. The sky occupies at least two-thirds, if not more, of the painting here. And so it's more. So it's actually or almost a quarter of, or three quarters of the painting is all sky on this one here. And look at the visual journey. Look at the positions of dark clouds up in front of lights. The cloud, even the darkest cloud that's here, has a light side and a dark side. So even the dark one in front of it has a lighter shot side and a shadow side to it. And look at the light side and the dark side through the cloud. So the light, look at these each individual areas, the light side of the cloud and the dark side of the cloud. They're magnificent, okay? So the Dutch would put a lot into, uh, the, into the sky, a lot of interest and stuff into the sky because that's basically, uh, you know, what showed up most into, into their landscapes because their land was very small and very flat. Bierstadt, Albert Bierstadt, now we studied him in one of the landscape series, and I love him. Now, as you move from the Dutch masters of the golden age, now with the Dutch, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the techniques that they would use there, but they would do uh, wet in the wet and glazes and many layers uh, and uh, in, their, in their techniques. And I've studied them up close and have some beautiful photos of some of their techniques that they use. Um, and they would put so many layers into those clouds. I mean, they're, they're, they're so very realistic. So the Dutch masters would use a technique, a, a, a layering type of technique. Then as you get into the 
I'd say the middle or early part of the 19th century, along comes another. It's just at the beginning of the Impressionistic uh, period. There's a whole group of painters called the Hudson River School painters that start out in the middle part of the 1850s and so and go all the way up past the turn of the century. And also the Pre-Raphaelites are going in at the same time. Each of them have a little bit different philosophy about painting. But one of them that stands out the most, a Hudson River painter, but he also had some pre, uh, some things to do towards pre-Raphaelites where you're expressing the powerful part of nature um, comes along as Albert Bierstadt, which we've studied him before. And Bierstadt is, is amazing. And so in many of his paintings, and there's lots and lots of his paintings out on the internet and stuff, you can go look at his paintings, they're beautiful. I want to teach you how to look at them, okay? So here is one, beautiful mountains, nice uh, triangle shape path, you know, going back, um, his visual journey taking you into just to the center right of the painting, way in the back back here. He puts horizontal, instead of using his clouds here as uh, visual journeys like Van Rystal did and stuff, he's putting this horizontal path uh, across the clouds this way here, taking which takes you uh, horizontally across the painting. The mountains have such a beautiful triangle of, of uh, interest that take you all the way back here to the back, but yet the clouds take you side to side. And so he's not really putting in that much of a visual journey. But he does have this beautiful uh, sky up into the top corner. Um, he has this magnificent um, late afternoon, uh, early evening uh, painting here where he has white luminosity to the edges of the clouds right up here at the top. There's this beautiful uh, luminosity to it. Okay, sunrise coming through, sun rays coming through it up at the very top. You can actually see a little bit of the sun. You can see the light diminishing as it goes back to the back. You have this wonderful play of lights and darks and warms and cools into the clouds. So here you will have uh, up in here into this center area here, you have the center light. And then objects are going darker as they go out on away from each area there. So the light is coming right into here. So visually that he has an interest into the cloud area. Then he also has a visual journey that's taking you into the back here. But the visual journey through the clouds is softer than the visual journey into the ground. And so your eye tends to go to that ground a little bit bit, a little bit to, uh, less. But here he's using clouds. They're powerful, but the expressions of light and dark and warm and cool are a lot softer than what we just saw in Van Rystal's paintings where he does it. Now that doesn't mean Bierstadt paints that way. Bierstadt does both, and I'll show you. But it's he uses both. He uses his clouds to set a beautiful expression into his painting. And this is one. This is one artist that I want you to study if you really want to see how to use clouds in your paintings. Okay. Here's another one. Evening scene. Beautiful. Uh, look at the the luminosity. He's painting the the uh, clouds for luminosity. He is using a Hudson River technique of painting the clouds. And in the Hudson River technique where they're painting that, the belief was if it's an afternoon sky, that you would start with a light glaze of yellow. Evening skies and morning skies start with a light glaze of red colors. But the yellow and the red were used as underglazing, underpainting into, into the, the painting itself. Unless you're showing the, the sun itself into the painting, then you would do more of the yellows. And here he's showing the sun into that. So he does this beautiful underglazing and then these glazes of warm reds and purple, then purples and violets into here that are cool. And he plays his purples against his yellows, his warm oranges and yellows. And the, these are just lightly kissed to the top of the violet colors. And that's what's creating this luminosity. And they use this also in setting their trees and everything. It's a beautiful technique done by the Hudson River painters and, and Bierstadt especially, where they're just using the edges of, of the clouds to help grab and, and put it in the real warm, right up against the real cool, and it gives this real spark of luminosity. It's a beautiful set of clouds. And again, here's his visual journey. Here's his triangle coming down through here like this. 
right back to his light sources. It's amazing. This is another one of his when he was painting over in Europe. And this is where his clouds, and of course over in Europe, I don't know what it is about Europe when you're over there, but they tend to drop that, that uh, landline way down, skyline way up. Beautiful application of lights and darks. Here the sun is coming through a set, uh, you know, hole in the sky really. It's lighting up back here, dark clouds up into the into the, the side over here. Very much like a Moran or something. Uh, you know, he's very powerful like a Moran. Moran does this all the time. In some of my last paintings uh, that I did, uh, the approaching storm and stuff, you'll see me, I'll paint some very dramatic skies with a use of light and dark, uh, like Moran and some of the other artists will do. But here you have dark clouds coming right in front of light clouds. And the using of the light and dark clouds themselves to, to cast some of these, uh, you know, very stark areas of interest where you you know you have this real bright bright color here it grabs your interest but that sky is almost as interesting it's a very very interesting painting and so he would paint a sky like this and then you'll turn around and he'll paint a sky like this and I love this the falls at St. Andrews I love this painting and that someday I'm going to recreate this with you because I absolutely love this painting it's a huge painting it's a magnificent painting and some of his paintings are so huge. And you go down to the National Gallery in Washington, Washington D.C., they're huge. I mean, some of them are 8, 10 feet across, 12 feet across. They're beautiful. But uh, the Falls of St. Andrews here, I, I want to do this sometime. Here his sky is kept more simplistic. Very high stratus, little stratus clouds up here, just all broken up and stuff. And most of the interest stays down here in the fall, into the falls. And notice this time now the ground line is pushed up quite a bit higher. Okay, it's higher into the painting that's up over halfway. And so the sky is softened out. So the sky doesn't have as much interest in it. It's softened out. The expression is drawn lower into the painting here, lower into the painting. So it's more about the water, the movement of water and the falls itself. And so the sky does not need, the sky just needs to be a simple, slightly interesting backdrop for the painting itself, okay? Now, here's another one of his dramatic. Now, this is where he gets more into pre-Raphaelite uh, type feelings and stuff. And he believed in both, um, you know, both, a, a, you know, feeling. And sometimes there, I mean, there was a real dichotomy. It's like he'd take some of this and put this powerful, godly movement into his paintings. And, and many times, and you look at some of these storms, like there's one the afternoon storm. He has this this beautiful movement in there, and many times he was in, he was ridiculed for that for putting too much, um, uh, you know, of a feeling of that. But it gives this beautiful power and feeling to it. The light you can feel coming right through this hole into the cloud, and the light side of it and the shadow side of it, and so you've got these other little bits of light here, which I don't on this particular painting don't really understand I know the light is right back up over here you see it diminishing through the sky and you see the light coming back down through here and the shadow coming back down through here I do not understand the light in this way now there's the top of a mountain I understand that it's getting lit up but where is this light coming from here and the only thing that could possibly make this happen is where he your your eye is drawn into here and and the light coming down through here but the actual light that he is looking at expressing is way in the upper left way back here so the light is pushing through this over here it's hitting this right here but it's up and it's hitting some of this right into here and that's the only thing and that does fit with a little bit light to dark but not this one here and this is where you know you're sitting there and you're thinking about okay so his light sources it's when i look at it it's a little confusing. My eyes jumping back and forth between it. it doesn't have a real good flow to it, but yet it's a very, very powerful painting and a very interesting uh, painting into it. And so sometimes you can get, when you're painting something like this, you can get so confused with your light that if you don't give the viewer a real clear indication of here's my light and here's my dark and here's my light path moving through my painting, you can set up kind of a confusing area. So it, it's beautiful. My eye really travels up through here. And, and he has this light over here, which is a softer light. But I don't understand that light that, that's here. Where is that light that's casting that? And, you know, that's going to take me a little bit more study. Or, you know, I've seen those kinds of situations. Really, I truly have in Nebraska. I've seen them. 
uh, and holes in the sky. And I posted some beautiful pictures of those types of situations. Um, you know, are they are they ones that the average person can believe without actually being there? That's hard to say. So, do you paint it? Well, that's that's hard to say too. It's more. It's a little better sometimes to paint what people believe, you know. But Bierstadt does some beautiful, beautiful things. Then we go into a man that is uh, is wonderful and uh, a, a one that I want you to take a look at. And he does a lot of cloud study. He's a Prussianistic painter named John Constance. Uh, and, and John Constance is a... a um, a beautiful painter in that he said his technique is extremely impressionistic uh, and uh, he is uh, uses a lot of textures, a lot of bristle brushes and a lot of powerful strokes when he goes and he's developing his uh, painting. His technique is just it, it, it's amazing. Um, and I've, I've looked at his paintings, you know, down at the National Gallery and tracked several of them across here, across the United States. Um, he, he really is made to be looked at from, you know, quite a bit, quite a far, quite far away. You walk up to his paintings and you see none of the colors are flowing together or blending or anything. You get into a Dutch master and it's almost like they're mopping a little bit here and there. Soft brush, they use soft squirrel hair brushes when they paint those clouds. So the colors m merge together. Don't really blend, but merge together. And uh, then painting in multiple layers, you get these uh, this real uh, soft, velvety, soft kind of clouds. Uh, Constable, did I say Constantine, Constance early? It's Constable. <laughs> Constable, John Constable is different in that he's an impressionistic painter, okay? So Constable, he comes in and he will put massive strokes of color and then he follows along the lines of the impressionists which do a lot of optical blending. So as an artist, you you know, how are you going to paint your clouds? You're going to mop them, layer them, impressionistic paint them. If you look at uh, the difference between Van Rystal and Bierstadt and Constable, those those three right there, if you go study those, those will give you some really good ideas as a, as a painter. Three very, very different ways to approach some of the paintings of the clouds and how clouds can be portrayed in your, in your painting. So here you have Constable painting here and just touches and stuff. Man, when you look up close at his, his technique, it's magnificent. You see the actual textures and brushworks within his within his paintings and sometimes very very soft um, you can see the dark purpley colors and the grays you can see light coming through magnificent um, you'll see other parts where his his work is just you you know here you have this ultramarine blue sky and these puffy clouds and you see the brush moving in so many different ways and touches and quick dabs and jabs of color, especially up into the front, up into this area, and then a little bit softer as they get further back. And when you look at a painting like this and you look at it up close, you go, oh my gosh. And then you step back and the optical blending starts to take effect. It's magnificent. It's absolutely magnificent. And that's my complaint is I go down to the National Gallery and I look at some of the Dutch painters and I love their skies. And up close, they look magnificent. And far back, they start to just work and blend together. Where in the Impressionistic and Monet and stuff came in and they started to paint more Impressionistic, allowing this stroke to have its power and the, the blending of optics of your eye coming in that's when it really started to change. So when you look up close, very, very close, at a constable uh, technique here, you can see he's pushing stuff around. And you can even see in here, look at the different directions that he has here into his brush. Look at his, there's a jab. There's This is actually a stab of the brush uh, being pushed down right into this area here. A stab and a push of the stroke right into this area here. You'll see short strokes. You'll see strokes that are slightly curved. You'll see strokes that are, are pulling more lengthwise here. You'll see some dragging, almost like scumbling of some of these yellows right over the blue skies. Uh, you'll see a, quite a few of the different types of techniques and they're all optic techniques. Sometimes he's applying the color very thin. 
sometimes he's applying the color a little bit thicker. So Constable has a really great way of, of viewing things as well. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is, as you're looking through some of these things, of course there's more, Thomas Moran and all these others, that you, you should go look at too and how they use the skies. But uh, I, I want you to look at Beerstadt. I want you to look at Beerstadt, and I want you to look at Constable. I want you to look at Van Rystal, and you can look at others, Louis Ashton Knight, and then his father, Daniel Ridgway Knight, and some of those others along that way, to help you with it. And at the end of the in the lesson, in the written lesson, I'll put a few artists that you should uh, reference to and start to study. But before we need to do that, we need to see what is it that's in a cloud. How are these guys seeing a cloud? Okay, and then they're using different techniques to portray what they're seeing. So let's go see what a cloud is, how to see a cloud, and then we'll get into a few techniques, okay? So what actually is a cloud? Let's just take a real quick couple minutes here because we got a lot of painting to do, okay? Now, these are some pictures that I take and... Um, uh, when I'm, I especially love to take them when I'm in Nebraska, my son's place out there. It is so flat that you can see clouds from the horizon to horizon, and you can see light expressed on them. They're fantastic. But usually, what you know, one of, a couple of things about painting clouds and painting skies. First off, like what you notice up here in the top, look at the background of the sky of, of the cloud, which is the the sky. It is always darker blue at the top, lighter at the bottom. We know that is a fact because at the horizon line and there's a lot of scientific bits behind it but at the horizon line you're looking through actually through more of the atmosphere and because the, as you're looking through more of the atmosphere there's more water vapor in that atmosphere and the water vapor reflects refracts the light and intensifies the light and actually makes the dark blue of the sky which you look up looks a little bit lighter as it's pushing uh, more light through as that water vapor is intensifying the light and lightening the light Okay, so along the horizon line is some of the lightest areas of your sky. The darkest area of your sky is right above you. And go check that. Just go walk outside on a nice blue sky day and look out there. It'll be darker up there and lighter in the horizon line. That happens. But then the cloud itself, the cloud itself is going to have a light side. It's going to have a shadow side to it. So here by looking at this cloud, we know that it's more. this is more during the midday of it because the shadow of the cloud is way at the bottom. Now, how much of that shadow of that cloud you, you see, that has to do with perspective. We'll talk about that real quick in just a minute. But basically, you see more of the bottom, so you'll actually see more gray, a lot more gray to the, uh, of the clouds in the uh, in a midday in the top area of the painting, in the mid area of the painting, and less and less and less as you go to the back, you'll see more and more light to it, okay? So, uh, and that's because the angle is getting lower. So if you're looking at it like here, your cloud that's right here, you're seeing a little bit of the bottom and a little bit of the top. If it's up here, you're seeing most of the bottom of, it, of the cloud. If it's down here or along the horizon line, you're seeing most of the top of the cloud here. That's just the way it works, where that cloud is like this and what you're seeing in reference to your eye line, okay? So your water's clouds, all kinds of clouds. I love these. I took these little pictures of wispy clouds one day as the wind was just disintegrating them and blowing them off into different directions. I love these clouds too. Uh, this would probably, this would make, you know, get rid of this. This would make a beautiful set of clouds, light wispy clouds into a painting somewhere as, uh, you know, like the one like uh, St. Andrew's Falls or something like that where the painting is gonna be more about the, what the subject matter in the landscape itself. I took this, this is early morning out in Nebraska one day. I love the Nebraska lights, the, the morning you can see the sun coming up there. Look at the, the light, the luminosity of the light of the clouds there onto the left, the lower left. You see the shadow area of the cloud um, up to the topper, top area of the cloud. Little bits, little flicks of the, of the uh, cloud. Uh, like up into up into this area up in here little flicks of the cloud up in that center there get little light now That's what constable does which is great He'll put this darks in there and then put these little flicks and pushes of light and that actually happens If you start to look at clouds that actually happens and that's why his paintings are so fantastic um, 
and then look at the uh, you know the differences of the the light how they're expressed and look at those bright light edges as it gets closer to that sunlight uh, there there's this magnificent and you can see the Sun this is right before that this is actually a picture before the last one where the Sun is just beginning to come up and you see it just beginning the light situation that'd be a beautiful set for a uh, for painting sometime and here I have a sunrise and I love to take both the sunrises and the sunsets this is that same thing looking and I was looking at this how the light was hitting and look at the darks those darks sitting right in front of the lights and uh, real close to where the sunrise look at that that edge of that light reflecting off the bottom of that cloud right up into that area there and you know that's that's just what Bierstadt was painting in that one it's just fantastic so when that light when you have that sunrise and sunset and that lights real low you're gonna get that real warm light sometimes orange Bierstadt put orange on top of that purple as it's hitting the underside of those of those clouds there it's just magnificent here's another one where you see that real light see it's actually hitting there below and so the dark the darker part of the clouds are on top here so when you look at this one right here the Sun is low the light part of the cloud is at the bottom here and the dark part is at the top but during the midday if we go back and we look at a cloud during the midday it's reversed the light part of the cloud is at the top and the shadow part of the cloud is at the bottom so your your technique that you use to paint clouds is very much dependent upon where that Sun is okay so that's the first thing that you have to decide and so when you start to go attack your clouds where's your Sun how is it going to light those clouds those clouds are objects just like a mountain and a tree and a rock in your painting is an object that clouds an object and it's going to be lit by that Sun and it's going to be lit by that Sun depending upon where that Sun is okay that's different here you see a beautiful you can see the light source you can see the light coming from the left here lighting up those edges and you'll get that luminosity edge now how does the artist capture that the Dutch would do it through layers and layers and layers of color uh, Bierstadt would do it through you know putting down that warm yellow first and then put in some purples and then put in some lights and capture that luminosity of that of that cloud uh, constable would do it even different you know push some of those colors in even wet in the wet sometimes translucent sometimes more picky put those yellows in more translucent and then more uh, you know a little bit more with the uh, opaque of the purples and a little bit translucent with the whites and push those colors around and so each one's going to be doing it a little bit different big thing is I want you to just see what is a cloud there's all different kinds of clouds you know start collecting all kinds of cirrus and stratus there's all different kinds of clouds but how are they going to get lit up that's what I want you to see their lighting is always a little bit different and then there's always the drama you know this is just like right out of uh, I took this in Nebraska once as a storm was coming in right out of a you know one of beer stats or Thomas Moran or something like that coming in with that blue sky and these darks coming in look at these dark clouds coming in right across the light clouds the light thin wispy clouds that are shown there in the back and these powerful dark clouds the light sitting off behind over to the the right behind these dark so what is making these clouds over here on the right so dark it is because you're actually looking at the shadow side of the cloud okay those ones that are way off into the back they're being lit by the Sun their position to you so the cloud is here the Sun is here and then the next clouds are here and so you have these dark clouds right here because you're looking at the shadow side of them you're looking at the light side of these guys back over here and the Sun's right in between them fantastic color setup you see Bierstadt do that you'll see our you'll see uh, uh, constable do that you'll see all of the artists the Dutch Van Rijst all of the artists do that particular type of technique too so where do lights and dark clouds fall depends on where you're going to put your Sun within your painting and look at all the different types of clouds that you're going to have okay we'll look at some specific shapes of clouds in just a moment You know, before we get into that 
simple little cloud, what I should probably do is take it just for a couple minutes here and talk to you about perspective because it's so very important. Now it doesn't actually, um, well it does play a role in how you're going to paint your cloud. It applies mostly though to the overall feeling of the landscape itself that you're going to paint this cloud or seascape that you're going to be painting this cloud in. When I did the quick and easy landscape series, one of the things I made is this perspective grid, which was very, very helpful. And it shows you where you put up a vanishing point here. Then all your objects, wherever it's drawn here, will try to recede down in shape towards uh, that particular object. And I have some very simple DVDs on perspective that are very important. Um, that also applies to the, to the sky. Now, for many years, I painted landscapes without realizing that that applies to the sky too. So now when I went back and I looked at Bierstadt, or, and Bierstadt uses it quite a bit different, but I look at some of the Dutch, and I look at uh, Constable, and I look at Moran, and some of the, how they're using their clouds, depending upon the painting itself and the feeling they want to use, sometimes they will set up this visual journey within the clouds themselves. And what you do is you set up just a descending cloud pattern like this, and you put it into the planes of the cloud, and then that goes back, and that visually helps you uh, to your, uh, you know, to your uh, line or to your uh, sp perspective uh, spot that uh, that you're going to establish. Okay, so sometimes those uh, those those perspective or those lines can really help you add visual depth to your painting. And so when you look at when you look at uh, pictures and stuff like that. Uh, for example, uh, this particular one here. Now, my wife and I were driving back from Nebraska, and I said, oh, quick, grab the camera, take a picture of those clouds, because it's perfect. When you look at these clouds here, you have larger clouds up in here into the top right, and then they're descending down in size as they go further back towards the horizon. And you can almost look at this road, follow the road along, that becomes your vanishing point, Way down here is the, the point of the road where it's disappearing into the horizon here. And you're looking at the clouds here descending down in size. Now also look at the clouds themselves. Like I said earlier, up here at the top part of this cloud here, at the top right cloud, you're going to see more of the bottom of the cloud. And then you see less and less and less of the bottom of the cloud. And that bottom becomes more of a line as they get further back there. But that's the visual perspective that these little clouds can have. And so sometimes that visual journey, you as the artist, you can use your clouds to add a visual journey. Here the road and the clouds are both adding a visual uh, journey to my particular path. I love this picture that I took out in Nebraska here one day at my son's house. And this cloud sweeps around from the top, around to the right, and then all the way back, these line of clouds all the way back uh, to the back. So here up at the top, you see the dark bottoms of the clouds against the blue sky, just like a Bierstadt and Moran are doing, okay, which is and one of them, and, and, and Constable's doing. And then the clouds, you see less and less and less of that wide angle the back, you know, as, the, as they go further back there but you can see they get smaller and smaller and they, it actually follows along in that little triangle. This one also shows the light, the light area of the sky along the horizon line to the dark blue up into the top corner as well. Beautiful uh, little example of it. But sometimes you want to paint puffy clouds and you want those clouds to still have a little bit of visual journey. This one does. In here, I, I took this one because I love this, and I'm probably going to put this one into a landscape as well, is because it has this beautiful blend of both light and dark and puffy clouds, an intermittent uh, bit of the uh, the blues, and notice the light blue area right into the center of the painting there, and then up in the top right corner right up there, there'll be some dark blue right up there. But then you see the clouds on that right side, you see them kind of descend down in size. You see the the bottoms of them get smaller and you'll see just a visual journey set up perspective wise through the particular cloud. But it's it's ever so soft. It's not as dramatic as some of the other clouds that I just showed you. So it's a little bit softer in its presentation. So you can you can determine, that's what the artist is going to do, determine how much. Are you going to put that subtly into your clouds? Are you going to put it just right there for everyone to see into your cloud? You can, uh, you can determine that. This is another one that's just kind of subtle, subtle in its journey. 
has a nice journey through the clouds, especially uh, over here on the right side, you see the line going right down to the back back here. You'll see the line reinforced by the center line coming right down through here, right there. And so there's actually, you know, they're all heading towards a little vanishing point there. And again, look at how dark the sky is up here at the top and light the sky is down there at the bottom. So that again, that's another one where it's uh, very, very fun to, to see the differences and stuff into the sky. This one uh, picture I took uh, one morning out in front of our house, one winter morning, and and it was it's beautiful because it shows linear perspective into the sky into the clouds. These roll on wall clouds coming in one morning, and it doesn't happen very often. But you see just the lines, the descending lines, wider lines at the at the top up here in, in the front, and then get narrow, narrow, narrow as they get further back towards the towards the uh, horizon line. Just a uh, a perfect example of perspective there. So what do we mean by perspective? Well, it's you know, if you were a Dutch painter, let's say, for example, here, uh, let's just take a little, let's just, we'll do two paintings here side by side. You know, how would, uh, you know, say, Bierstadt do it to how would a Dutch painter uh, do it here, okay? We'll come in just a little bit bigger. Here we go. Okay, so a Dutch painter would drop their, their horizon line down a little bit lower. They would make the whole painting about the cloud. So you'd have a cloud and you'd have a visual a line of your clouds descending back down in through here. So that controls the uh, the your journey. So your eye is going back through here. Of course, you'll have some objects here and descending down here, but this will these clouds here will control the journey. Now I'll hide some of that with some other clouds and stuff in inside of here, some other clouds and stuff coming here. But inside of here, very clearly, I'll put the visual journey. And so the bottom of the cloud is going to become more visible here, which is going to grab your contrast and bring it forward. And then it's going to become less visible and less visible and less visible as it goes down this way to just towards the line. So that's basically how your clouds are going to go back into your line. Beerstadt would, would come in here and he would put mountain and mountain here, go bring his line up close and mountain and mountain and mountain and mountain and take you this way here like this, maybe have a little, you know, lake or something like that here. So you've created this, this visual journey here, this way, through the painting, this way, coming down and through the painting, coming down like this. And then in many of his paintings, his clouds would be used just as horizontal accents to this particular line that he is traveling this way here taking you this way. So they may be big clouds, they may be here, they may just be horizontal line clouds like we showed in that one there. And then sometimes you'll use those clouds as big powerful movements. So, you know, where are you gonna set your horizon line? Are you going to be, is it gonna be all about this clouds like the Dutch, you know, coming over here, setting the horizon line low, painting a lot of clouds? Is it gonna be like, are you going to do a lot of mountains and stuff like that in here with a lot of mountain interest and everything here? And let this go back, go back, go back, go back down like this. Put in your horizon line, have your visual journey, some lake or something like that. You know, all your elements, you know, going back here, heading towards that visual journey there. And put clouds just softly in there. You're going to do it like St. Andrew's Falls. Are you going to just do just very thin layers of cirrus clouds and put all the interest into the landscape? There's a lot of things to do. My, it, our job is to just notice how these artists are capturing some of the effect and how they're using the clouds. You're not just taking a brush and applying a bunch of clouds in there. The clouds support and can become the focal area of your painting if you do it carefully, but also use them to establish perspective. Okay, And so as you're looking at some of these paintings, look for a vanishing point within the clouds, descending and descending cloud size down, Watch where you put your shadows and how you put your shadows in accordance with your light source, okay? Let's go take a look now at that simple cloud. Now, you have lots of different ways in that you can attack a, a simple cloud. But let's first look at where the light is, shadow, some things to consider about painting a cloud, okay? So here we have a simple little cloud. Now, when you look at a simple little cloud, you know, and you have the, 
a cloud. Let's just put a, a little cloud line out here like this. Okay, so we have a simple little cloud that we're going to be painting here. This one right here, you can definitely see the light is up from the top side of it because the shadow of the cloud is down here into the bottom side of the cloud. And notice that it is almost a, a circular or, or an ellipse here of the cloud itself. It's right down into this area of the cloud. There's other little break areas of the cloud where that shadow is going to come up. And that is because the cloud just isn't round. It has little portions of it here and there that are breaking it up into smaller little round units here. Just like, the cloud is just like an apple. It's just like anything else, okay? And it's gonna carry the light source to it. Here, when you look at this little cloud, so it has a light source to it. It has some of the shadows coming up, some of the shadows coming up to here. It has the light, the shadow side is right down through here. A little bit of the light hits on this bottom side over here because the light, that just shows that the light is coming from over, back up over this area, back up to the left and back just a little bit. So it's gonna light that little edge there. Some painters would do the luminosity to that. That's what they would look for in their clouds. Like it's dropping to a sunset or something like that. And that's the back edge. We'll, we'll talk more about that. But you're gonna have this shadow edge. You're gonna have a lighter shadow that's gonna separate up in here some of the di various different areas of the shadow. Uh, some of the things that you might want to consider when painting your cloud is more of an edge and then you have the part of the cloud which is going to be disintegrated if a cloud is moving. Now this cloud isn't moving that much, but if a cloud is moving, it's going to be disintegrating on one side a little bit here as the wind is pushing it through. It's going to have a building side and a, and a side that's being pushed through. Okay, And so the building side will have more hard edges right here, more crisp line edges and here will be more wispy to it right here. So that's how you set, set movement. And I showed you pictures earlier of little cirrus clouds and broken up clouds moving along the sky. Some of that can be added into your painting very gently, like with a little bristle, a little uh, fusion. We'll show you that. And that just adds movement to it. So you're gonna add movement to your sky. You know, that's one of the things that artists uh, always say. And I, I read something about from an artist here the other day that said one of the most important things to establish in your painting is movement. And I, I got that took back. I was taken back because some of the Dutch and everything said lights and darks of the, you know, contrast of warms and cools. And this artist, who is a more modern day artist today, very good selling artist, said movement. Because your, your painting has to tell a story. If it's not telling a story, if it's not exciting, then it is not interesting. So there's a, a, a lonely little cloud sitting up there all by itself is not an interesting little thing to paint. But a cloud that's moving slightly is a little bit more interesting. It grabs more visual elements and interest. And so that's something you might want to consider. But look at the, the cloud itself. Notice the shadow down here. Now, what do we notice about the shadow? The shadow here is cool. So underneath here, this is the cool side of the cloud right down here. This whole bottom side here is the cool side of the cloud. Yes, these are shadows here, but they are a little bit warmer, a little bit more, maybe a little yellow into there. It's a little bit warmer. So you definitely want to need darker, cooler grays down in through here, warmer grays. This is where artists like Bierstadt will be tossing in some of his purples and stuff like that to accentuate that, uh, that coolness to the cloud. Look at the sky here too, a little darker and a little lighter back through here. Okay, so you're going to have some subtle shadows on here. You may have more of an edge to one side. You may disintegrate the cloud over here on one side. Smaller little edges here. But all of this, all of this will have little areas here that are little shadows coming through here. That's going to give the cloud interest and it's going to give the cloud roundness through. But this is the most important thing to establish right there within your cloud. And of course, as you get more and more clouds, then what you're going to do is get more and more things to look at within your clouds here. And you know, here you can see the light is coming up from this side here. Look at the, the deep shadow here. This is the bottom side of it. You're looking through the thickness of the cloud here. That's why it's so dark. There. So this taller cloud here is darker. Do you get that? The taller cloud is darker right there. Now, of course, some of that varies with water vapor, how much it's carrying and stuff. But a thinner cloud, more light passes through it and should, the shadow can be lighter. So here, a thinner cloud, the shadow can be a little lighter. The darker cloud here, if these are the same types of cloud, the darker cloud will have a little bit darker 
color to the shadow side because it's a thicker cloud and light isn't passing as far through it as it is the thinner cloud. Notice the difference in the shapes of the shadows. But even your side shadows up through here are not as dark as that bottom shadow that's right up and through here. Okay, so your darker shadows there at the bottom of part of your cloud. Here's another one, nice little, nice little cloud here. And this one I like because it shows a little bit that this little bit of dark that's right here shows you that that light is is right up over here in this side. So you're actually looking at a little bit of the shadow of the cloud here like that and the lights hitting right in between here. But look at the subtle, look at the real dark areas of the cloud right through here and here. And that's another one that tells you where's that light on there. There's you know, that light's coming from right back up here, but this shadow's folding around. So that's, this is a round object. So you might sometimes pick up that darker in front. That's just like the dark petal in front of a round rose. So how does that happen? Because it's curling around past the light and you're seeing a little bit of the shadow on the other side. We call it the form shadow of an object. It's called the form shadow of an object. So even a cloud will have a form shadow if it's a nice, beautiful, round cloud. It's going to have a form shadow. It's going to have a light side and a form shadow. See the form shadow here? This is the shadow. This is the form shadow of the cloud right here. And then, of course, you have your highlight and that. Here you have a destructive part of the cloud. The cloud's moving this way. And you have a building part of the cloud here with nice nice edges and stuff like that to it. So you have some different ways to it. Now, one last little uh, cloud and uh, that I want to show you is uh, one that I took one evening out here in front of my house here in Pennsylvania. And I just watched it through the evening. This one little cloud in the, in the sky, it was all lonely. And I thought that's the perfect study. I wanted to watch it through the evening as it was settling down. And so here it is right before sunset. And you can see, you know, this, the side, it has a light side and a shadow side pretty clearly to it here. But because the sun is now dropping down at this angle to it here, the shadow is not darkest at the bottom there. The shadow is more off onto to this side that's over here. But look at the warm colors and then the purpley colors that are coming here off to that side here. Fantastic. And and it's going to change. It's all going to change here as I start to, uh, as as the sun starts to go down. But it's beautiful to to look at this particular cloud. This would be like a nice evening painting with a nice evening cloud here. And then if the sun goes lower, it's going to hit more along and through here. But as and I took different things of wide angles of this little cloud to watch this one little cloud. This is the same cloud as the sun is hitting in different positions. And so here's the sun hitting right through here. Now, we'll look at this. The sun is sitting right here like this. Now, let's just come in real close and look at this here. What do we see in this cloud? Now you'll see what the Hudson River painters are talking about, that luminosity, that edge. See that light edge right there. And that's what they're doing with the real warm color right there coming in. So you may take your little bristle brush or something like that and you may just dance a little bit of that warm. Look at the cool dark purpley color that's right up in here onto this side. Nice crisp dark color through the majority of that particular cloud because you're looking through this thickness. The sun now is so low, the angle is so low and so much to the back here. It doesn't have enough power to go through the cloud to light up the cloud. So the cloud actually starts to go up. Uh, a little bit darker. Then in the evening time here, as, it get, as the, the sun went down a little bit more and the power went away from it just a little bit uh, more, I was uh, really quite taken with um, here that, that edge, how much softer that edge became. And you can just see a little bit as I zoomed in here on this one too, a little tiny bit of that, maybe capture a little bit of that uh, that evening glow right up through here, just a little bit of it. But the edges of this, I was on the shadow side of it, which is the contrast side of it this time, is how much those edges just got so dark there. So, um, you know, when you're studying the luminosity of it, when you're studying the luminosity of the clouds, that's what they're saying, especially you're going to, that's going to happen when you have that sunrise and that sunset. And one that I, I really want to paint, and I'm going to paint it with you sometime, is this. I took this one in Nebraska, and this is a sunrise of a cloud here. And I absolutely love this. I want to paint this into a painting. And 
you the sun's coming up this way through here so it's lighting up through here as we get to the thickness part of the area of the cloud you'll see you can see the shadow here or excuse me the light traveling through the cloud here see that see the light traveling it just gets here's that warm that warm color then slowly becomes cool that purpley color right in through here then picks up more of the stratus right up through here it's just beautiful and just little bits of that purpley color come back through here uh, just really pretty and so you can look uh, you know right out through here now look at this this is what i was talking about uh, uh about constable he'd come in here and he'd put some of these purples in and this this stab that with that light that's hitting right on there that's someone who really studies those clouds and look at that light edge right there to that dark edge there so light to dark and a light to a dark and a light to a dark as it's traveling through so you're seeing all these lights you know travel through these clouds it's it's fantastic okay now as we look back over to the other side of the cloud more toward the clouds that are on the horizon that are angled with this with the light source same picture but look at here's that orangey warm color right up against that purpley color and look at how it is bright here and then it slowly it slowly diminishes down here to to nothing on this side of the painting here so it really tracks here's your light and then your light just dis, dis, disintegrates coming here but you'll pick up little edges of it here just like constable does in his paintings this little edges of that of that light traveling through but it's getting less and less and less so you're setting up your light and you're moving your light through like that okay it gives you a different way to look at a cloud so when you look at a cloud i want you to look at it, it has a light side it has a shadow a shadow side where is that shadow and how high is that shadow on that cloud is going to be dependent upon what angle you're looking at that cloud where it is in your actual painting uh, and then how dark it is by how thick it is or how powerful the light source is okay and then the type of light that you have do you are you down by that horizon where it's picking up more atmospherics where the colors are coming out more orange or is it up high where the colors are picking up more of the yellows and the warmths of the day okay so there's a lot of things to do so with that that will give you some ideas to how to look at some of these clouds let's go paint some simple clouds and some of the different types of uh, techniques you can use to paint clouds There are lots of ways in which you can paint clouds. You can use your bristle brush, you can use synthetic brushes, you can use your palette knife. I've used them all in all different kinds of situations in uh, my DVDs and, and the landscapes and seascapes that you're painting. One of the things that what's, what's going to control that or what are some of the things that I think about when I'm going to grab that is how interesting or what kind of statement is that cloud going to make within my painting. And I try to paint my clouds with some of the same techniques that I'm going to do with my landscapes. Therefore, I get a better harmony of techniques within the painting that I'm going to do. Here I have a, just a simple board that I'm, I'm going to be painting here. And I just base coated it with a little phthalo blue and a, a little bit of white, just a light kind of grayish blue. Here, just so I can do some painting. Most of the time I start with my uh, my skies and stuff with um, uh, white and it's just going to take up too much video for me to sit there and put base coat all blue all the time. So I'm just going to do it real fast to you because I got a lot of things I want to show you. Let's talk about some of our techniques. You have a bristle brush. I love these. These are uh, board bristle brushes. This is, you know, Constables, one of Constables uses, and of course, Beerstad and the majority of your landscape painters use the bristle brushes. It comes in rounds and flats and filberts um, and different sizes. I tend to oversize as much as possible. I follow along the, the theories of John Singer Sargent, use as big a brush as possible to make areas of statements because then you take less strokes and then the color has more interest and not just the, the brush stroke has interest. I like to use my fusion brushes and um, I generally use these big, I, I like this instead of a mop or anything like that, it's a big oval soft one. I use uh, fusion brushes like this to do a lot of the uh, painting, cloud painting, the filberts, sometimes flats, flats give a little bit different type of cloud than a filbert does, but these are soft, these are some of my favorite cloud painting brushes. They make, generally make softer clouds than bristle brushes. And then the knife, the knife is one of my uh, favorite, all time favorite things to paint because it makes shapes, irregular shapes that are not like the stroke shapes. Now, Constable, we saw we can put strokes and stuff in there. The knife, uh, Beerstadt, um, 
and uh, some of the other uh, seascape artists, Moran, stuff like that, have these other uh, shapes in there that are, uh, they're more natural sh looking shapes. It's, you don't see this this type of stroke or anything, uh, but within it. And I emulate those really well by using the knife. So the knife paints, uh, you know, some uh, uh, some very, absolutely very beautiful beautiful shapes to it. So and I use a knife in a lot in the sh uh, seascapes and you'll see me in some of the seascape videos use a knife up there into the, the clouds again. There's mops that you can use. There's some people that like to use the mops that mop that will mop the cloud and do this. Now that is and it works very well and you know to get it emulate like a Dutch look and stuff like that. Yes that, that works very very well. The problem with it is a lot of artists that I see out there over mop their pieces. They're painting with it so close here and they mop it so much that it looks beautiful when they're looking at it from a foot or you're looking at it just this far away. What you should do when you look at your painting is put it, if it's going to hang on the wall, put it on the wall and step back three feet. And if that cloud looks flat or plastic and lacks its interest, you've mopped too much. And most of the painters out there I see mop, that use mops mop too much. So mops are dangerous and I don't use them very much at all in any of my painting because I can do it with the softer fusion brush like this and still get a softer look with without mopping and because that mopping will destroy all the movement and I don't because I've got optical blending that's going to happen at three feet. So the techniques that I tend to do are made to be viewed at like three feet or so when a painting is hanging on a wall. Let's get into some of this first, okay? I'm going to take down one of the things that I like to do is I like to do premier coup, a la prima style. Uh, even with the Dutch style like this, I'll start out like this sometimes. I'm going to take, um, I always like to work your cloud into a wet background. So in you, whenever you're painting, this is the one thing I want you to remember. If you have a background or something like here's a blue, what you don't want to do is use that same blue again. Every single time, you want to always make your color a little different. Look at an evening sky. How many of the same color do you see? You see that color constantly evolving. And so, so many of the painters today think they have to have the same color. And I want you to get out of that right now. You're an artist. Your area that you, what you got to do is add interest. And you add interest by always making your colors different. Okay? So constantly brush mix to make colors different. So maybe I'm going to make this light blue and this time I'm going to reach up and grab a little bit of my red violet, toss it up into here, make more of a purpley kind of color here into this blue color that I'll have that I'll add into this sky. I'll add, I'm just using my three quarter inch brush here. I'm going to put some of this color down. Now, if I want to truly track what it, what happens in a sky, here, I will put a little bit darker blue, right? What's, what's, what are we thinking here? A little darker blue would go up at the top. Lighter blue would go down at the bottom, down through here like this. Okay, so I'll, I'll move some, some lighter blue here, up here at the top. I mean, excuse me, darker blue like this, and work my sky down. Now, years ago, like when I painted with, uh, it took a lot of... of um, uh, you know, lessons. I followed him on PBS every day from Bill Alexander. He put out this magic white onto the surface and start with blue and then walk it down through the lights. And what the white, what it does is mix up with the whites. And that's what I do a lot of times. I take a real thin white like this. This is just white and extender. And I put that onto the canvas. And then I take a blue at the top and I walk the can and walk it down, so it becomes darker at the top, lighter down at the bottom. And what is that? That's emulating what is happening in nature. Bill Alexander put used to use, I mean, started that technique that a lot of artists picked up on and used for years and years and years. Bob Ross and everything, and they advanced that technique and did fantastic things. All artists do with that, and. The, the whole thing is, you know, uh, how are you going to do this? You know, how are you going to do that? That becomes your statement as the artist. But when you look at the basic sky, a basic simple sky is like this, okay? A basic simple sky is a little darker at the top, lighter as it gets down here towards my horizon. So I'll, if I put in any of my, like let's just put in a little bit of a green color here. And if I want to make a quick statement here, just real quick here of a green, let's just say. So I'll put some green down here. I'll have some green grass here, right down here, green grass down at the bottom like this. As that grass goes back in the painting, it's going to become more like the sky. 
And this is what you simply do. You just simply add that that grass color right into the uh, or the sky color right into that grass. You go like this and add that right into there. So what happens is you get darker and you get darker. So you get this, the two of them come together right along the horizon line. And that's what makes the horizon line is where the two get lighter and lighter and lighter and they come together almost to the same color right through there. So, and that's what artists do. That's how you get this visual perspective. This is what happens into the distance. And so as we add uh, objects up here into the front, it doesn't make a difference what you add. It could be a little bush or something like that. As I add this, if I say this is going to be a little bush or something here, as I add this, this is going to become smaller and lighter and more and more and more and more and more visually like the horizon there, and that will push it right to the back. And the same thing with a, a cloud here as I go back with the cloud, okay? So... In your mind, you're setting up. Your your first setup is darker at the top up here. This is what happens. And then as you get to the horizon line, because you're looking through more of that water vapor, it's got to become lighter. So you set your ground up like that. Let's just let's just push that back like that. So you see a little bit, of, and that's what's going to give you your perspective. Now, as you get up in here, let's talk about simple little clouds. Okay, we got to paint some clouds. Now I put down background color. I put down color like this because it gives me something to paint into, something to soften into. I like to do that. Now, how much is very, very important. Okay, you don't want your color really wet. If it's really wet, your cloud is just gonna is just not gonna stick. Okay. And you want quite a bit of paint. If you have too much paint, your cloud's not going to show up. So part of the whole process of learning how to paint, and the, and the majority, I feel, of the process is how much paint to use. That is very important. I'm going to say it again. How much paint to use. Don't just slap paint on here without feeling the surface and thinking how much paint to use. Because... How much is on the surface is going to make it either easy or difficult to paint. You want just enough. Now, how much is enough? That's going to vary for each one of us and vary determining upon the technique or the tool that I'm going to use. If I'm using a soft fusion brush, one like these here, I can have less paint on the surface and I'll be able to get a nice cloud with these. If I'm using a, a, th a stiffer brush like this, a bristle brush, I need more paint on the surface because the bristle is going to dig holes and as it's going to dig up and remove and take off and stuff really easy because it's a stiffer brush. So if I'm going to be very soft, I can have, if I'm going to use a fusion or something like that, I can have a little bit less uh, color or a little bit less color on the surface. As I head to the bristle, a stiffer brush, I like stiffer paint. Thicker paint, stiffer paint onto the surface. So if you're if you're moving your, your brush and you're digging it up and you're seeing your background or the white of the canvas come through or something like that, you don't have enough paint on the surface. Okay? And watch that. That is the most important thing. That's why I say it several times, is how much paint you have on the surface. And if you're fighting it, and your cloud isn't staying, you can't see your cloud, the second you touch it, it disappears, you have too much on the surface. Vary that. That's what I want you to practice first in any of your painting. And whether you're painting a rose with me or whether you're painting a cloud, it doesn't make a difference. It's how much paint's on the surface, okay? Now, let's come down here and let's just grab some, I'm just going to use a soft little bristle, I mean a soft little fusion, we'll try that. Notice how thick my white is here. This is how thick I, well, I like my white. And in the oil painting, we used to always say thick paint sticks, sticks to thin paint, okay? And we would make uh, beautiful uh, uh, thick clouds and stuff like that because the paint of the white is so thick. Now, we'll step off to the side here. Let's take a little bit of the yellow. Now, what's the yellow going to do? It's going to be a nice warm color. Let's get a little black, maybe even a little bit of the red violet over here as a little shadow, cooler shadow, shadowy gray color. We'll make kind of a, a warm to a, and we even put a little bit of blue into that too. So we'll get this other kind of grayish color over here. So this will make a pretty little cloud, especially if I get a little bit more blue into it, like a, like what you see in the painting there. That's beautiful. So there's some very cool color. But what I don't want to do is always get the same color. So 
might have a little violet in that too. I'll go up here towards my warms. Now, if I have green on there, I might even add a little bit of green up into these whites here too, right up into your clouds. Your job as the artist is to paint beautiful harmony. Look at the beautiful yellow green, light yellow green gray that that makes right there. It's beautiful. Right down into here, into some of your shadows here that will go and even to a little bit of black here some of your deepest darkest coolest shadows look at the shadows that would be on that cloud that would be a beautiful cloud to paint within that and so i'm using some of the colors that i already have out here but let's first let's just take a little bit of that grand brush we'll just model some of this thick white the first thing is to do is to come in and let's just say we're going to paint a simple little cloud i'm going to think of the building side of the cloud here so we'll build up a little bit of the cloud. How much of the cloud you're going to see? Now, if I don't reload my brush and I just lighten up like this, that little fusion will soften as I head from the building edge of the cloud over to the wispy edge of the cloud over here like this. It'll happen just naturally. Now, a lot of times I like to hold my brush like this. And this is how I always tell everybody. Hold your brush down like this onto it and paint more flat that keeps you from going like this and dabbing you know constable uh, constable uh, will do that constable will do that I keep wanting to call him constance constable will do that and uh and and dab at it and we'll show you that but i can use this like this i can just whisper this over the surface like this and create soft little edges i can use this a little bit more harsh up here wiggle it a bit like this and set up some back edges to this little cloud here like this we can drag it out when you have wet colors on the surface this is the beautiful part you can just go like this use your finger and add just a little bit of movement here beautiful movement to your cloud that's what i like to do with that wet i like to come in let's come in a little closer you see that see that beautiful movement right there to the cloud that you can add then I'll come back in and very simply, I'll come back in, tap in a little more of my light and do that again. Maybe build another little part of the cloud, another little round part of the cloud here. And that makes a beautiful, simple little cloud. I can whisper this, just take a little bit. This is why I love these fusions because the cloud is already very soft. I can take this if I wanted to give it a wispy edge or say I wanted to do some type of stratus type clouds, real wispy stratus type clouds up here like this. I just drag this over the surface like this, okay? Drag it like that. Then just take your finger because I have a little bit of wet paint here on the surface. Now it's not really wet. It's still blue, but it's a little bit sticky just a little bit sticky and that's what you want to wait for sometimes you might have to wait a few minutes for that but you want to wait for that now why because if it's too wet when you come to do this everything's just going to move together but if it's sticky it has resistance underneath your hand and I can just lightly pull this like this and I'll get that little wispy effect now you can use your brush to pull this too sometimes I don't like to use the mop but you can use a brush like this and you notice how that brush softens it faster than my finger does. But that's going to give you all these wispy little edges right like this onto that cloud. And we'll put a few right up over here. Maybe a little bit more of an edge of a cloud right here like that. And we can just whisper those just like that and give that nice movement to that little edge of that cloud there. And let's add, that's the disintegrating part of it. Let's add a little, a little part trying to build, the building part of the cloud. Let's just add a little bit of it. I want to be a cloud right into there and whisper that back just a bit there. And you'll get a little more of that wispy look to that particular cloud there. Isn't that kind of pretty? Along the horizon line, as you go back through here, you want to think, Okay, I want to think, I want to get my clouds a little bit lower, a little softer right down in here. Maybe not quite as much. The angle of these has to change a little bit. So the, the actual angle of the cloud has to become less. As it gets further along the horizon here in the bottom, that cloud will become more of an angle like that. And you can just whisper ever so lightly, just a little bit here along the horizon line. 
what that little cloud will look like that. So then you get this depth through your painting here of your clouds, just like that. Okay, And I painted this whole thing with one little brush, nice soft little cloud. And, by, and then I can come back in and say, okay, I want to add just a little bit more. This is just a little three minute cloud. But once you understand them, once you understand them and some of their movement like this, you can do some pretty little stuff. Now, Constable could come back in and tap like that, but see, because of the fusion, because I use a fusion and not that bristle, which is more stiff, I don't have to stab at it. I can just lightly kiss the surface like this and just add some beautiful little cloud setups just like that. Uh, and it gives a nice, it gives a, a really, really nice look to the painting. So I'll use thick paint like this just on a surface that has just a little bit of stuff there. And then I will think of a building edge and a wispy edge and I get a nice look to some clouds that way. And of course you can build up more and stuff like that over there. But that's one way. And then of course, you know, how much of that building edge you're going to put here and the types of edges and stuff like that, that's up to you. But with this, with this brush here, this is a little number 10 um, fusion brush, soft, hold it flat, use stiff paint like this and put that in there and that is very very easy to paint a simple little cloud now we didn't add shadows and stuff to this one but you can we'll add shadows to the next one but that's just a simple little cloud then we'll go do another one here and we'll add some uh, shadows to it okay see you in just a minute Now we'll take that simple little cloud and we'll add a shadow to it. So let's come back in. Same type of thing. Watch the consistency of your paint. I'm going to take some extender, my three quarter inch brush. We'll take a little bit of our blue. I have a little bit of blue and a little bit of red violet in that. Just change up the blue, like I said before. Change that up. That gives more variation to your sky. What do we set up? We set up the light, the dark into our sky here. Now, if you're going to, um, you know, if you're going to paint a lot of landscapes like I do, uh, then you might want to set up a little container of that white and thin it down with the extender till it's exactly the consistency that you like to paint in that works for you. Adjust it with the extender. Then you already have your own little, like uh, Bill Alexander did for us, your own magic white. It is right at the, uh, the exact consistency that you need to get some of those effects that you like to use and that's what I do. So I'm going to put some blue down through here. I'm going to put a little bit lighter down here at the bottom of the horizon line. This time I'll get a little bit more casual with this here. So I'm just going to scrub this up. I love my skies now as an artist to have movement and I like this kind of movement here where I scrub the brush like this and then pull back and forth through it like that. I love that type of, uh, rather than, you know, some of my students make uh, um, too much of a, uh, a mistake in that they go a lot of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth like this. So their sky really moves horizontally. Now that's not completely wrong. We saw Bierstadt do it in his painting. But if, you, if you're painting a smaller composition and you want to use that sky to help add some movement, rather than do that, let's, model it up and let's do that not with this with the background of the sky let's do that with the cloud so we'll model this up like this which is truly what happens in the visual part of the sky and then we'll do um I had some more later so let's just put a little green just a little bit here just to say we did it here just like this and and then how do you make this green if i do this green how do we make this green recede what do we add to it to make it recede what do we make? How do we make anything recede in our painting? We add the sky color to it. So let's just put a little sky color right there on the edge of our green, and all of a sudden we'll set up a little vanishing, a little, a little bit uh, of depth, a little bit of depth perspective, and so it'll come more green up through here, and then that color will just become visually more like the sky as it goes to the back, and that's what we want to do. Okay. So we set that up. We could have it a little bit darker, but I'm going to show you some other back painting techniques here with this one. We'll set that brush off here to the side. Let's go back to our soft one this time. We'll build a cloud. We'll build a shadow and build a cloud. We'll build a cloud with a little more interest. So let's say that you 
you know, the last cloud that we use, simple little cloud, you might use that like St. Andrew's Falls and some of the ambush where the cloud is just with the white, soft, a lot of stuff. It doesn't have a lot of power to it. You're going to have a lot of power to the lower part of your painting like in a landscape. Now, let's give more power to the cloud itself. To give more power to the cloud, we need to paint more of the cloud. So we'll come back in here. We'll grab some of our thick white. We have some of our grays over here that we made earlier. I'm going to come back up over here. I'm going to say, okay, here comes my cloud here. And I'm going to whisper this out. I'm going to use the brush very flat because I'm painting here with this one. Now I can go back and go back and go back and add and add and add, but as I'm going to paint this cloud here. But what I want to do, and we'll paint like that little cloud we saw earlier here. What I want to do is I want to paint this cloud and I'm going to visually add a shadow to it. So I'm going to paint this cloud a little bit more here, a little bit more of its shape here like this. And let's give it a disintegrated edge here. So it's a little bit windblown. Let's give it, because I like those. And we can travel that just with your hand. See how nice that travels there just like that. I love those just to have a little bit of action or movement to it. And that's what's so important is that, you know, this, this artist that I read and, and um, he always says that he, he finds the most important thing that he adds in his paintings is action, is movement. And boy, howdy, that really affected me and has really affected how I perceive my paintings. Let's go down and just drag a little bit of that around down here, okay? And uh, let's just break up our sky up here real flat, just very light, just kiss the surface like this. Let what happens happen. Wiggle it around a little bit like that. That'll make that nice high cirrus type clouds going through there like that and then just pull down like this. You could use your brush too. Like I, I love to use these brushes here to just drag through. If you don't want to use your hand, I love to use my hand, but if you don't want to use your hand, you can just drag through like that and just give a little bit of that motion to those. They're so fun to paint into, into that surface, so fun to paint. So let's come in now. Now, so we have this bigger cloud. now. Down below here, we want to take some of our gray. So earlier, what I did in the last cloud there is I had a little bit of my gray, some black, some yellow, some little bit of violet here. And we'll just add a little bit more extender here to that. Loosen that up just a bit because it's dry just a touch. Let's use this very flat. Let's come back in here and let's set in the shadow side of a cloud. Now, this is going to be a cloud that in a painting where you want to have more interest. So the first one is a very soft set sky. Now we're going to come in with a cloud that's going to have more interest. And by giving it more shadow, it'll have more interest. Let's take just a touch more black right into some of our violet. And just like anything, you can think there's the softer shadow. Now we'll come in here and we'll impart the deeper shadow area to the cloud right over here. So if light's coming down through the cloud through this way, right in through here like this, this will be the deeper edge of the cloud. Now. Take your brush, you can pinch wipe that off. You can soften this many different ways. You can mop it, which I don't like to do because I lose too much of my interest. You can use your soft brush like this and you can just, just hit the edges of it. Just hit the edges of it like that. See how that just softens? Just hit the edges. Don't mop the whole thing. Just hit the edges. Or you can use like I like to do is I just run my finger around it just a bit like that. And that adds some the shadow and the movement into the cloud there like that. So now I've got a deeper part of that shadow. I want to push that shadow out a little bit farther out here. I've got to look for what shape? That oval kind of shape here on the bottom of this cloud here. And of course, depending on where the cloud is, if it's up high or low, that shadow shape changes. The amount of shadow that's there changes, right? Now, if I do this, just lightly whisper some of this around and drag over, let some of this drag over, even some of that shadow. Let's come in just a little closer here, okay? So now I'll let some of this drag right over the shadow. You get a better layering of the shadow. Now, the Dutch used to do this and they would dry and put in another layer, thin, transparent washes of layer. But if we're painting with the heritage like this, a la prima, we can do it just right now with these real soft brushes flat. Just grab that, pull through like this, 
and you'll get that light color dragging right over that shadow like this and that'll set that shadow in that cloud that shadow right into the cloud okay so now let's come in so I have a nice little shadow there okay now let's come in and let's add a, a little bit of warmth to that so I'm gonna come right over here and add a little bit of warmth so you're gonna paint a cloud here now that is gonna have more interest so first we did the light okay then we're gonna add the shadow then we're gonna add a little bit of our warmth to the to the cloud here up onto the warmer side warm area highlights lights to the cloud here okay light colors to the cloud let some of that wispy little blues come through because that makes that sheer and I'm just using the thin part of the brush this is why I love this fusion hair this soft hair and we'll just let that just well let's just break up this edge of the cloud there just a bit as well okay we'll drag just a touch maybe of that warmth now right down there now don't worry about that okay I like that but it's a little too harsh so I just wipe it like this now a couple things I can use my finger and drag it or I can use my brush and pull it each will give you a little different a little different look here so I can pull it many different ways here and I want it to sit just right over that shadow just a little bit so you get a little wispy through the shadow if you've covered it up too much just take back and add your shadow back in there again and sometimes the layering back and forth will give you great looks or redefining some of the depth of your shadow like that right in there and just whisper some of that right into the bottom of your of your cloud down there it's just a great way to put in the nice deep part shadow of a of that cloud but you got to remember you have to have different values so take some of that up here like this work those back and forth and sometimes depending on how interesting I'm going to make that cloud I will work that several times so you get that beautiful look there now I'm going to come in and put in imagine my cloud I'll put in some thicker white here but imagine my cloud and you can stab it like constable or so but I will imagine the more round part so I have like two parts to my cloud here so I will come in here and imagine the building part of a smaller area of the cloud right in here like maybe this one's building right there like that it's got a little light edge to this one right here right there okay we'll drag some of that down sometimes I'll just pull through like this and grab some of that movement down here now I'm doing this all with the tin you could also go to a smaller brush as well here let's come in and let's, let's do like a little constable and, and come in and just hit little areas of that light thinking about little areas of light that might where that might hit on that cloud right up there okay and I've got a little warmth into that a little building a little warmth and I've got that too perfect now if I get it too perfect like that what I do is I'll just go like this I'll push it back like this and don't be afraid to do this that adds that nice soft movement in it that you can just come back here and build again build another little edge there on that cloud see the different little look that you can give it there you're gonna to want to have that building edge of it here so we'll build that edge there right in there like that okay so you can get a cloud here that has more of the shadow now I'm going to express now I'm going to rework that shadow just a little bit more let's find a little more of a form shadow into the into the cloud maybe a little bit up there we'll find a little bit of the form shadow into the cloud right up in here maybe there's a little bit going on back in here sometimes you'll see me put you know a longer dark coming back like this as it's trailing through as the light especially as the light gets a little bit more at this angle it'll trail through and so you'll pick up more and more of that you might pick up a wispy little edge of the of the cloud out here like this okay a little wispy edge of that there I'm gonna go down and we'll get a little more detailed here smaller little filbert and we'll add just a little bit more edges here to the cloud like that 
Okay, a little bit more light here and there into this cloud. A little bit more light here and there. Just with the flat. See how whole, how flat I'm using? So here's a cloud that's coming, and I'm going to build this edge of this up a little bit here. Here's this cloud that's coming here, and I'm building here. Just soften that. That is, I'm doing more to it, more more to the uh, cloud itself, adding more lights, adding form shadows to it, form lights to it. Okay, it's getting more paint, it's getting more interest, it's getting more depth, it's going to have more interest within my painting as well. Here, so, and then you know, you can use real stiff little stuck color like this to put on final little lights and shines and you know you can you can do it more like uh, constable or beer stat see these little light areas and, and shine areas to it you can do that work your cloud out add some small little touches of shadow work your shadows back and forth you got to think of little rounded rounded areas of it okay little little areas of of lights and darks and movements and stuff and how does that affect your puffy little cloud here and how much do you want to add to your cloud and so it'll give you all different kinds of looks so a small brush can add more details a bigger brush here would make it smaller which one's correct well how much interest is your cloud going to have in your painting and make sure that whatever you do to that cloud you're carrying that same type of technique down into your painting as well so it'll work with the large it'll work with the small you can add the shadow do I make it darker do I make it more stormy you can do that as well and you'll see that in several of my other DVDs we'll do that okay let's go we'll go grab another board and I'll show you the bristle brush How you doing? Welcome back. Now let's take a look at this brush, the bristle brush, okay? Now the bristle brush is stiffer, which means you want your paint a little bit stiffer, so don't have it quite so loose. And right now I've put it on my on my background here just a little bit loose. And let me show you. As I as I move like this over the surface, see how it's how that's digging up like that? Okay? And so that's what the bristle will do is it'll dig up and, and show up to your background. So what you need to do is put that background on just a little bit more paint, a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to reach up here and just add a little more paint uh, here to the area in which I'm going to be painting. I'm going to take a little bit more of my, uh, step back just a touch here, take a little bit more of my blue and I have a, a tiny bit of the red violet into that and let's take a little bit of the, the uh, white into that. And let's just add a little more stiffer paint into this area that I'm going to be painting this cloud. And again, working the the the, the clouds here, I mean the, the area from light and dark here. And you don't want that to show up. It shows up just a little bit, not so bad there, okay? And you want that to, to have enough paint on there so you don't be digging stuff up. Let's take our thick paint here. Let's load load this into nice thick white load this into the bristle okay because you want this thick paint to stick now let's come in close now you'll see the difference of the bristle okay this is the difference of the look that's the look of the bristle okay as opposed to the uh, look that we just did let me load up our my soft brush here of of this it this is softer this is softer edge of this uh, with the fusion I can get it very soft with the bristle what's going to happen is I'm going to get it more it as I put that on see the difference between the two this has more power more movement this is this is constable this is more movement more power and this where this one can go soft now you can get this one soft but all these little ridges that are in here have lots of paint so you're gonna and so it's going to soften out a little bit different. See the difference between the two. The bristle paints with more power. So if I have a, a scene where I'm going to want a lot of power into my clouds, that's your bristle. Okay, And that's why Constable and them, he'll, he uses that bristle and he gets that movement in there. Okay, So it gives you a heck of a lot more movement. It can give you some pretty movement. You can combine the bristle 
and the fusion together and get some beautiful looking techniques to some of your clouds. I mean, look at uh, some of these techniques here. They're beautiful movements through here like this and grabbing this and moving that through. I mean, that's just lovely movements to the cloud of combining both the bristle and the fusion and with the proper amount of paint on the surface. That's, that's the most important. See how this white paint is sticking exactly where I want it to be. That is extremely important. It's sticking where I want it to be. But let's continue on here uh, with the bristle here. Okay. So the bristle, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start and I will wiggle it a little bit. If I want it soft, I wiggle the bristle just a little bit and I will make that softer look. Now I will skip the brush over the surface to make more of your, your thin clouds. And then I will push and wiggle to, to move the brush, to move the clouds out like that. Okay. So I will load this brush up with some paint. Let's load it up here with some white. Let's push and wiggle some of that white around and build that light. Let's build this right up here. And I'll roll the brush to get different little edges to the cloud here like this. Okay. And we'll push down like this. We'll load this. We'll let the, the cloud here, we'll let this, this push like this. And then we'll roll the brush, roll the brush like this to get some different movements of it, letting that blue pick up and create the light side and the shadow side here of the cloud. Do you see that? Just roll it like this, just kind of drag the edges here of this and let's just drop this down and create some movement down along the horizon line there. Okay, we'll create some, there's lots of different ways to paint beautiful movements and stuff to your clouds like this. Okay, and movements like this to those clouds like that. Maybe we'll have, we'll pick up some more white and touch that in like that. Okay, just create some, some beautiful. But when you look up close here, look up real close at this right up in here. Look at the movement that you, you get within that cloud. And you get more actually with the bristle than you do with the fusion because the bristle has, adds more stiffness and movement to it uh, than the fusion. The fusion's softer. So the fusion is great. The fusion is great for soft, where you want clouds soft and it's not gonna be all about the clouds. And the bristle's really good when it's more about the clouds, but you can use both. Just understand that there's both, okay? So I'll set this movement up like this. Let's step back just a bit. And I can come in and I can adjust the movement here with my finger running through like this and, and grab some of the movement to the cloud like this. Grab some, uh, like the clouds being, you know, moved through the sky there like that. And this becomes part of your artistic statement is to how are you as the artist gonna paint this cloud? Maybe this one goes like this, and I'll, I'll just grab this. Now, you can do this also with um, uh, your, your brush. The problem is with the brush is the finger, I can feel the contact with the surface, and you can't always feel that with the brush. So we'll uh, push that in, and let's just give a secondary little light area, like right up in through here, and pull this through. You know, it's good when you when you take lots and lots of pictures of clouds and find how you want to paint some of your clouds. You know, how you might want to set up and paint some of your clouds. And you'll feel, you know, you, you'll look at those, get the ideas. I never, I, when, when I paint clouds, I never try to copy a cloud perfectly what I see out there in, in nature. What I try to do is capture the feeling of it. Do I see it moving? Do I see it building? Do I see it, you know, the flyaway edges of it? You know, does the cloud, does the cloud have flyaway edges? And most clouds, unless it's an absolutely still day, will have some flyaway edges there. And that's that lovely movement. See how much that adds when I add that lovely movement at there. And a, bris and, and a, and a fusion can come in and just make a real soft, 
area to a cloud that's just so pretty as well right back in there like that so you can build these beautiful beautiful clouds uh, like this with that but look at how much more interest that you can build uh, with the uh, with the bristle like this through this cloud here building like this and carrying some of this up like this let's grab some more you know you can do some stab movements of it like this now constable and them you know he'll do some rounding movements he'll do some pushing horizontal movements he'd like to have some movement back like this that might suggest other movement you know through the sky that that cloud is going to be moving through the sky like this you know so some sometimes with that you'll have other artists that will paint backwards up into this negatively and you know i'll show that or i'll push some of this back up out of the way like that to create a back soft edge like that and then push a harder more round building edge like maybe right here like this so that cloud looks a little bit different it has a soft little side and a building side to that okay i can you can also one other little technique that works really really well is and it works for me it works better with the fusion than it does with the with the bristle but i'll show you is like take fusion is to negative paint is to lift back off so i can come back here and lift a soft shadow like right into this area of that of that area of the cloud so i lifted a little bit of a shadow so i lift off and let a little bit of my blue background show up in there now I like to do that on roses and everything, you know, because I I love the look of those, uh, those you know roses and stuff and in, in, in doing that with them, but uh, in petals. But it also works in clouds, and so you can lift off any type of shadow. The bristle's a little harder because it, it doesn't lift it off quite as smooth, but it does lift it off. So let's just drag a little bit of this out here like this. We'll make this a little bit fractured out through here. Just so you get an idea we'll run this now when you run the the high stratus or something like that up here just drag this over the surface like that you'll see the the feel is different the look is different you get more of the the spotty look to that you can add more uh, some angled movement to that like this through you can grab your finger like this and move some of that through like that okay a different look to it here okay and we'll just soften that edge build that edge there and soften that little bit there look for those little the bristles nice to do like a little bit of constable and just come in and just tap like this little bits of that light right in there like that and build a beautiful little cloud that way um, let's just build a little bit more right up in here with that one right there so you can, and this is no shadow, this is just a soft, but look how much more interest you can, look at how much interest you can say this little cloud is going to have here uh, and drag these edges and stuff here. Pull down and drag and look at how much more interest that has just because you're painting that with the bristle. Now we'll go back, we'll add, make a little cloud and we'll paint some shadow in it and come back with the bristle, okay? Next one. So now we'll take that bristle. I put the background on again. Okay, now we'll take that bristle. Let's come in here, take some white. We're gonna put a little shadow this time with this with this cloud. We'll come back up here, start real low. We'll angle, hold the brush down flat. Wiggle it around, that starts to make your cloud. Okay, wiggle that around. The more you wiggle, the softer the cloud comes, the, the more the bristle moves it into that wet paint and the softer that cloud becomes. You can restate and your your lights into that. Okay, how much light you're going to put into this little cloud here? Maybe you let's let's drag this little cloud out this way a little bit more. But we uh, then we'll drag some down this way. Usually when I paint a cloud with a bristle, I don't do it just once. I do it several times with the fusion. I I can do it. I can get away with it just once because basically. The fusion clouds are clouds that are uh, going to be on soft paintings. And when I'm doing the bristle, I want these clouds to have more interest. So I end up painting them several times. Step back just a bit here. 
And there's all different kinds of ways, and that's for you to find your reference photos. What does that sky look like? And I showed you some of mine. I'm going to paint that in there. I'm going to use it as a reference and, and you know, paint that look or that, that, that cloud that is, you know, maybe it's going to go into the horizon line and into the back, and then you see it make this journey into the back like this. You know, this may become my painting, you know. Here, as it goes to the back towards a horizon line, this cloud comes around like that. Up here at the top, it comes up against pure dark blue sky, giving it lots of contrast. And it goes up against the light horizon line back here with a little bit more going on back here so it maintains its softness. But that curvature right there just does beautiful things for it here. So we have some of this. And I get this paint nice and thick and lots of stuff going on there. And I'm building this cloud up that I'm going to have right here, and I'll just give a few little edges of it back here if I'm going to use this moving around right to the back. So you can see that one photo I showed you, this is how I would probably attack it, and then put some uh, additional movement right up in through here. And a lot of times I add this additional movement later after a lot of people say, why don't you do that movement first before you build a cloud? Because a lot of times I let the cloud control the painting. And so I will put the cloud in and then I'll look to see how much interest I can have out here with some of this stuff, some of these other little bits out here, how much I can have and support that will, you know, support that cloud but not detract from it and take away from it. So we'll add a little bit of that high cirrus movement up through there like that and build this cloud up here just a bit. Wipe your brush. I'm using very stiff, thick white. In the Heritage White, I make it very, very stiff. It comes out very stiff. I like it stiff. I like it thick in, in the consistency of it. And uh, that just gives me beautiful, beautiful stiff paint to work with, especially with the bristle to do some of these clouds that are going to have all of this type of interest there. I can lift back off with this, but it doesn't lift off quite as well as that fusion does. But it does give you a nice look. Okay, now in adding the shadow, I'll come back up over here. And let's just work a little bit of our shadow here. Okay. And I'll grab some of that gray. We'll imagine some of our shadow. Let's imagine that this is part of this cloud right here. So this thick part of the shadow comes through. It'll come through and show up down through these. But it'll come through. It'll get a little softer as it comes up through this part of the cloud. And we'll just drag that through. Let's get a little bit more of the gray, maybe up here towards the warmer bit here. Just a bit right there. You can get more violet. You can get more colors. You can... Look at your clouds and you'll find and discover your colors there. But that's putting the shadow into that cloud here. Let's put a little bit of that shadow here at the bottom side. A little bit of that coming through some of this other part of the cloud. And you can see that shadow is, so the shadow color itself is also contrasting against the blue of the sky and creating almost as much contrast as the blue itself, the, the white itself. Then what I do is I'll just pick up some more thick white here and I'll sink that shadow as part of the cloud, put a little bit of the cloud back up in front of that shadow here and there. Now the Dutch would do this in layers and now, you know, all the Prima painters will do it like this, dragging really thick, light, light, light touch, light, light, light touch, really thick light. Just drag a little bit of that across the top of the cloud like that. We can come back and hit a little bit of constable, think of constable and little touches of lights here. You could use your smaller brush and add more light details to that. Okay, all kinds of ways you can add these clouds. And they're fun to play and practice. They're just fun. And so I have a nice shadow, a little deeper shadow. My light's right through here where I have my light. It's a little deeper shadow right through there. There you have a whole cloud done like that. Six minutes. You can do it. It's a lot of fun. Once you start to understand it and see it, you can do it. You can paint it faster and don't play with it. You end up playing with it. You make it all opaque. 
then you have to go right back to your blue and start again, but you can do that as well, okay? Now the knife. Let's go take a look at the palette knife. One of my favorite tools to paint with is the knife, and uh, I love it just because it gives such natural, like I said before, natural variations to it. Let's take a look at it. Now, I, again, I put down the paint, and it's the consistency of the paint on the surface that makes them easy to paint or difficult to paint. So if you're having difficulty, change the consistency of your paint. Change the amount of your paint. If you are coming from acrylics, you're used to pro you're probably used to using really thin bottled acrylics and when we paint with these techniques the paint needs to be a little stiffer on the surface you can put it on thin and then just walk away go have a cup of coffee and come back when it gets a little sticky and that will help but to paint to to really have a lot of control to your painting you need to have a certain amount of resistance in the paint that allows you that gives you more time to work things if the paint is too liquid, there's no resistance and it just flows all together and you have less control. So you want to have a certain amount of resistance. That comes from the paint being a little stiff. Putting on lots of paint is sometimes also more difficult because every time you put something on, it disappears. That tells you you have too much. Okay, So bury the consistencies. And like I said, everyone is different. Everyone's hand's different. So the amount that you put on the, the surface is the key to learning how to do everything correctly. All right. So I have a knife. This is a, this is a painting knife. Okay. The painting knife has this little Z bend in it like this that keeps your hand out of it. That means you can use the knife very flat like this onto the surface. Okay. As you drag through. As you can see, I have paint. I have nice wet paint onto this surface here. Okay, now when I go to do a, a thing, a, a, a cloud, same thing. I reach down here. I'm going to grab a dollop of white. Let's take it down here. Let's just grab some of this and let's just put a thin coat of it here first, just to get the feel of it. A nice thin. Drag your knife through so you get a nice thin. There's not a lot of texture on it. A nice thin coat onto it. And let's just set it down in here and see what it does. You can see right there. I get this beautiful little feel to it. Now a lot of times I like to do this. I like to put my finger there for a little bit of support to help keep that very flat. And you can see I get this beautiful, especially as it runs out of paint, I get this beautiful draggy look and just really sheer look to the, uh, to the knife there. So what is happening here, whoops, let's go in just a little bit more. What is happening here, and you can see the blue's picking up on the knife, but I'm holding this really flat like this onto that surface, pushing it down, and I'm modeling it together. Now, if you push too much, you'll blend it all to one color. So you want to push and move and push and move as you're doing the knife. I'm going to wipe this. I'm going to pick up right over here a little bit more color. Okay, I'm going to come right down in here, and I'm going to push this tip down here, and we're just going to come across here and add a little bit more. Now, where I have it right here where I see a lot, I'm just going to work the knife in like this and just work that up and work it over to the edge and come down like this. Just work that edge. And then I like to smear it a little bit like this. So what it does is it gives you a completely different, see it's a softer look to the clouds here. So we'll grab this and we'll grab some edges here and we can push up edges to this. We can work in small little touches, small little curves. You can work small curves like this. You can work the knife flat like this and put the bottom sides of clouds in. Some artists will take it just on the tip like this and start to work little, little edges like this to give more or find edges or a little more interest and movement to the cloud here like this okay so you get this uh, this definitely a different type of look and feel to that and a build a, a build of the cloud like right up into this area you're building that cloud quite a bit and we can build some more I could pick up just with the tip of the knife like that and build some more 
right, right up in here. So I'll build a layer to these clouds like this. Okay, I can then push the knife flat, which causes that almost that blending of it and pushes that down. And I can pull and shape and pull the, pull the cloud down here like this. And so it's that I, I can use the knife and just pull like this, pull those edges down and give some movement like this to it, like that. Okay, so I, I'm pulling like this and that gives that movement to it. So it's a very, very different uh, look to the cloud itself here. Now, this is what, you know, you can see it does edges, just it does beautiful edges and pulls down like this beautiful movement to your clouds like that but you can come in like this and do these beautiful little stabs and edges like const uh, um, constable does you know almost called him constance again constable does i don't know he should change his name here we pull this through and you can you can combine your finger and stuff but look at the beautiful looks that you can get here to your clouds now and again you can put on thick layers, you know, more thick white layer down like this, if you want this to be a, a cloud layer that comes like this, let's say, here, like that, right in there, like that. And so you can get so many different looks to to your, um, to your cloud. You can add the shadows in there exactly the same type of ways. You can take some of your shadow color, which I'll push right into here, and we can come in and we can push that shadow right into here, wiggle it and push the knife very flat to cause some blending of it, of that shadow in there. You can tap the knife slightly to get some textures. That works very well. We'll put a little more shadowy color right in here. Small taps and works. You can use the knife very flat to blend. Small taps to add little textures and movements to it like this so this would be the shadow side of the the cloud right there grab a little bit of light and drag a little bit of that light over that edge of the cloud to set that shadow inside the cloud there like that so you can get all kinds of different movements and stuff here with this with this knife it's it's uh, it's really nice and it's very very different Consistencies is very important to that. Try to use it very thick. Try to use it, uh, you know, um, uh, a little bit at a time. Use the knife, and I call it burnishing, pushing down and burnishing the, the little cloud like this, burnishing that in, and then to uh, use the knife, small, light little touches of it. I can pick up just a little bit if I want to get more towards Constable and come in here and hit little areas like this very hit and miss with the little cloud like this and create beautiful beautiful little see the movement is quite a bit different than that of the brush and so and the feeling is different so you can tap it around in there a little bit and get a whole different type of movement or feel to that cloud there like that and some of that nice soft movements out like that so a total different feel look to it with the knife now we're going to come, we'll uh, come back, I'll bring out the big board here, and I'll paint some of the shadows up into the clouds a little bit more, more of a, an early morning or an evening type of thing that you'll get the luminosity that we want to add, okay? Give me just a minute, and we'll be right back. Okay, with this last little bit that we have here on the... Uh, on this DVD, I'm going to show you a little bit of luminosity, some of the dark clouds. Let's put uh, put a couple of clouds together. Okay, how are you going to paint? I'm going to reach over and I'm going to use probably all the tools that I have, and we'll talk a little bit about why I'm using it, what and where. I have a little bit bigger board this time. I have my same colors that are out here, and I put a little dark. The colors wet. Okay, put a little dark up here at the top, all the way gradient down to uh, some light. I'm going to uh, come in and let's just put, uh, let's just start a scene. Let's just say I'm going to put in like an, uh, a, a morning, uh, early morning or a late evening here. I'm going to, and usually I would start on a light canvas with a little bit of um, 
yellow onto the surface. But I, since the heritage is so powerful, I'm just going to add it in right now. I'm going to take a little bit of my fusion like this, and I'm just going to whisper in some of the light color, some hunts of yellow and some white here. Just and notice how I use the brush very flat. And I'm going to use it. I'm going to say, okay, my sun, my sunrise clouds are going to be right in here, right in this area, right here, like this. Uh, maybe down, jetting down here towards the horizon line. Let's just say our horizon line is going to be right here. And I'll suggest, maybe I'll suggest that horizon line a little green and a little dark right here, right now. We'll just kind of suggest, just a quick little suggestion. These are supposed to be simple techniques. And, but I love painting like this for you to show you some of this because I love when I was able to see it and it, it's a process. It's a process you're going to learn to see it. It's like I was teaching clouds the other day to, to some students and I was showing it and her, her clouds were a little confused and I said, I can't find the clouds in here. It's like you're just putting colors down what you're seeing colors, but you're not saying here's your clouds. And so you know, then after I sat down, I said, okay, this is a cloud. This is what you do. She saw it, it complete, and completely changed the way you're, you're painting. So it's not that you can't do it. You got to see it. And it's a process. It's a process of trying, trial and error and learning to see and see. And that's why I said at the very beginning of this DVD, watch this again, please. Because that's going to, every time you watch that, you're going to learn a little more and see a little bit more. As you look at Bierstadt's paintings and stuff, go on the internet, look at Bierstadt, look at Moran, look at uh, Constable and some of the Dutch masters and look at that, okay? Look at the beautiful look that you get real quick in here like this with, um, you know, just that quick application of those particular lights and stuff. And here's where we have it. Now, let's come in and let's focus just a little bit of that light. Like maybe that's going to sit right down in here like that. And just quickly, let's just drag some of that out. Just little hits and misses and little areas of, of, of that um, area here. So it's going to lighten up right up through here. We'll let it, the, the clouds start to come up here. Onto the, this yellow, this nice warm yellow, I might carry a little bit of that up into the sky here before it starts because it's a nice dawn morning and it might carry up and fade away back up in here like this. And so we'll just drag that through like that, okay? Drag this through, nice morning clouds here. Drag this through, try not to play too much because you'll lose that instant brush interest that you get into the painting here, okay? Now, let's say, okay, let's start to find some other clouds. Now, are you gonna find those clouds? How are you gonna find those clouds? There's a couple ways you can do it. You can sit there and find the clouds first with a light, okay, which you can do. Maybe some of the clouds that are back up in here, up at the top, you may, because they're thin, you may find them with the light right away. So we'll start some thin light clouds, like right up in here. Just drag this brush and just say ever so light, thin, light little clouds right here, okay. And let's just push that a little bit there okay grab a little bit of that movement push that just a bit drag that now you could also you know grab that with the knife and burnish that with the knife and drag them through like that see the different look that you'll get there each one of these will be a little different drag that with the knife right there like that that'll give you a little different look to those uh, clouds there okay to the top here so each one, the bristle will give you more, you know, look, how much interest do you want to have the, these little guys out here? Or are they going to want to have in your painting? How much are you going to give that? Okay, so like that. And you've only got so long to play with this while this background is wet, um, sticky, you know, so you got to move. And if you have to do it again, you can go to the Dutch technique and say, I'm going to come in and, and uh, glaze it again so you can you know, get some of your initial movement on like this and then put a light coating of the blue back on and work it again. You can do that. Um, but I love doing this with the acrylic as opposed to the oils because the acrylic does dry. I, I don't need hours and weeks 
the play to these clouds. I can make my clouds here very pretty very, very quickly. Okay, And I don't need hours to make those. So, you know, I, I want this to get sticky. I want it to get sticky pretty quickly. So, because that's, I don't need that much time. So I have that, that look right in there. Now, so I can put those lights in there like that. Next, I can come back and we can do just like a, a constable or something. I can come in here with some dark color like this. Let's get into some of our purples here. Nice, cool color purple here. Maybe a touch of black into that, get that gray in there. But of course, you know, he's going to vary his colors quite a bit. Let's get some of that gray. Let's grab some of this and drop that in. Get these grays in here. And this will be the shadow side of clouds. So you actually are going to make the clouds here, the, the clouds right like this, you're going to be making them with the dark this time. Okay, so the clouds will come in here like this into the dark. There like this. Put some of that in there like that. Let that run right into that light there. There. Maybe let these get a little wispy right up here like this as well, because you'll have light and dark running together up in here as well. Okay. There like that. Okay. A little bit up over here. Remember my little cloud I picture I took, you know, in the evening out in front of my house, one little cloud. It gives you a nice look to that. I'm looking for that and let's just let's grab this and let's say okay the light is going to come right through here so I'm going to take this right down right back through here like this and drag this along here maybe I take some of this with the knife here and drag it just move some of that together like that okay Beautiful look to that. Bury that a bit. Maybe give, uh, just let this put a little stroke like this and then just streak it through. Let that, pull that yellow down and streak that down and through there a bit. There like that. Okay. So I have this. Let's push some more dark. Let's get a little more of our Violet, blue and red violet, a little bit of black here, a little bit darker. And let's push a little more dark contrast up into this side of the cloud, the top side of the cloud, since the light's below there. So let's just drop that in. The light's below. So we'll pull that in through there like that. Okay. That's the dark side back through there. A little bit of this through. You know, going out and taking pictures and stuff really helps a lot to, to find some of these beautiful things as nice inspiration for you. You can paint as you understand it. The light is going to come here from below. And so the dark part of my cloud is going to be at the top. How much contrast I'm going to allow that to have is got to be my decision right now. Is I can come in here and I can just tap through into that and soften that out just a bit. Soften that edge of that cloud. Still leave a little bit of that shadow movement. You know, how much I'm going to let sit in there is going to be uh, my decision now you know to make let's bring in a little bit of that coming in from this side over here into the back right back there like that okay and we'll let some of that just streak back here just pick up a little bit of those colors streaking down back through here just doom like that and let's just streak those together around like that. Okay. Now, how much, you know, uh, are you going to streak some of that up through here? Let this fade away 
up and through here. You know, how much are you gonna let this, you know, go off and come up here to the sides here like this. Put a little cloud right up over here. Let's put a little more red into that, red violet into this one. Softer little cloud. Maybe it comes right in there like that. Okay. Maybe a little deep, deep right out here. Right up into that. So the light is coming back up through here. The light's here. The sun's still below the horizon, but it's popping up through some of this. And there is, because of the angle of this right here, it's there's some pretty dark stuff right here along the, the horizon line here. Okay. Boom, like that. There we go, just like that. Now we'll come in and we can start some of the luminosity of it. Maybe the luminosity will take a small little bristle brush here, okay? And to start some of this luminosity, let's get uh, a little bit of our, our yellow out here like this. Let's get some of our white out here like this. Maybe we wanna have an orangey kind of color. So we'll grab some of that red, that nice warm red Hansa and naphtha red light makes these beautiful light kind of orange, so a little soft orange there. I don't want a deep, a real bright orange. My daughter Jessica would like a bright orange. I don't care for one right now. <laughs> and so I'm just going to come in and let's just tap the edge of these clouds here, the bottom edge of this cloud and that edge here. And let's put in the luminosity or the edge of this cloud. Let me come in a little closer. Here, okay, and we'll take this to little corner of this, and we'll just drag that in here. And we'll say, There's the little luminescent edge of that cloud. And you see Beerstadt do this, and you see all really all of the real landscape painters when you start to really understand clouds. They'll say, Oh, let's put a little luminescence right into here. We'll drag a little bit of that right there. Let's just drag that across that cloud right there. Okay. Right in there like that. Okay. And drag that right. Just little spots of that. Maybe a little bit of it hitting here and there into the cloud. Okay. Drag a little bit of that. Let's drag a little spot of that. There's another part of a cloud. We'll drag a little bit through the scene. So that color is not only picking up on the cloud. Top side of the cloud this time. Top side of this one opens that up. That'll show you where the light is coming through. Here. So the light's coming through here. It hits the bottom side, hits the top side. Where's it going to hit over here? Is it going to hit this side here or down here? Because this is the light. You're going to say that right now. And you're going to say it's going to come right here. And see, that's going to support the light that I'm showing right there. And we'll drop that color in. And we'll let that fade away here over to the side. Maybe a little bit up into it, just a bit like my like my little cloud. The little cloud study I did. I'll hit a little bit of that up in here. Just because that'll add some more interest in there. Maybe a uh, a little bit more defined right in there. Let's make a little bit more yellow and light right in there so it's a little bit lighter yet right into that area. And see that little bristle gives those little taps, little interesting taps of color into that. Into here. You can add little more lights and shines to that. Little edges. Lights and shines, maybe um, you know, ever so light to just to take your or your orangey color, soften it out just a bit, and little touches of it 
to the top sides of some of your clouds. If the, light, if the cloud is peeking through a bit here, it gets into the actual, you know, details of it. How much of this is going to show through here into the head, so it picks up into this light. Just work some of those colors around and you see you create this this illusion of light and dark and this is what makes you know sky is so beautiful I'm gonna come back and reset a little more dark take a little black and a little bit of violet color nice purpley dark set some of that in there don't want it too much so I'm just gonna push that around a little bit I like that that dark and you know you you get to a constable and stuff he would really make it like a lot of contrast out to here and I'm not that much of a high contrast painter so you know sometimes I will sometimes I won't it's hard for me to do that but I do enjoy the look of it but it's more difficult because I don't like a lot of contrast but you know those that like to paint will love the evening scenes you might really get into that we might get a little bit of that softer blue gray into that so I'm adding now looking at it and coming in and just adding but I'm watching the shapes of my little clouds that's a little cloud it's gonna have a little light side it's gonna have a little shadow side so this might have a little light side right there to that little cloud that's right there as part of that. And so you pick up just a little bit of the light. Just touch right over here towards this light. Even though it's a gray, it's still in light. Here. And we add just a little bit of that through there. And you'll start to pick up some of the look of, you know, what a, a, a beautiful sky goes, you know, how, be, how to paint a beautiful sky. You know, and you might drag some of this up softly up into the cloud. You know, right up in here with the little bristle works great. You get those little bits of movement to it. Little bit of movement to it. Soften this in the brush a bit. You get a little bit of that in and there. Beautiful little sky. Here, a little bit of this gray, softer gray. We can add little touches of that up in here into the sky. Maybe a little touches of that orangey color just beginning to hit every once in a while up in here. Some of these edges here of these guys. They're light because they're thin and wispy, but they'll have little touches of the light of the sun that's rising through there like that so you make a nice uh, rise in there let's take a little bit of our green and violets here so your horizon would be right down here like this and you know maybe it has a nice this would be your horizon area here right there like that a little bit of soft gray right up against that horizon. So the horizon will be darker. Darker edge than what's going on there. Maybe a little bit of the violet coming through. You are going to make a nice sunrise type thing through the clouds there. And so you would let's take a little bit of our black and green and some violet there and really uh, put a bit more so a little more depth to this horizon here how this would look here and you pull this down like that You can see here we'll get this 
just some color pulling in through here. If this is land that's coming down through here like this, some other colors. Through here, and of course it'd get darker and stuff as it comes forward and stuff, but you would see like an evening or a horizon, like this is uh, or a sun, sunrise or an evening set. This is what it would do, it would soften the edges of those a bit back there. And so you'll get some of your uh, the feeling of it coming up through the sky up like this thing. And um, anything that you want really, really soft, you can use that fusion brush like this, okay? Very, very soft. If you want to get, you know, this is very, very small. Imagine if I did it up big, how much more color work I can do it. And we've done a, this whole painting here in less than 15 minutes. So you can, once you understand and some of the working and how some of this stuff goes on, you can paint this and, and look at putting light colors in with dark colors. Look at the clouds. You know, next time you go outside, look at the clouds. Look at a dark one sitting in front of a light one. Where's that dark one in position? And study where the light is coming on that. And your job as the artist is to then capture that feeling of it. You don't have to copy it. You have to capture it, capture the feeling of it. It's a lot of fun. Clouds are fun to paint. You have three major tools. You have your bristle, you have your fusion, and you have your knife. And each one of those will give slightly different edges, different looks to it, okay? And they're fun. And you can do streaky movements with the knife. You can go in there and tap little edges. Combining them all together gives a, gives a, a movement to your sunrise or sunset here that is pretty incredible. And if this was all in a painting here, and we narrowed this right on down to a painting, that would be pretty nice in a painting here. We put the whole sky into that. That would be a pretty nice look into a, a, a painting here. And this is a, a 15 minute set or a 15 minute sunrise, okay? You could add more lights or colors to this. Uh, let's just say I wanted to put more of a sunrise look into it or something like that. You could add more of your oranges and stuff right back in here if I took just a soft brush and added some more of my oranges right in through here like this. This would really give you a set or a feeling of the horizon or the light. Let's get a little let's get a little Hansa. Let's open this up like this is really coming in. The sun is really coming up in here like this. It's beautiful, but now you have a scene, now you have a uh, a scene here that is very difficult in that the clouds and stuff and the sunrise is taking over a lot of the painting here. So, you know, the interest of the painting just because the volume of stuff of the light in it there is quite a bit. So we can just streak that back and forth like that a bit and push these lights and darks together like this, like that. And it just gives you a beautiful set of interest there of lights and darks and, and um, you know, colors and stuff to use with it. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time. It hopefully gives you an idea of how to do some simple little clouds, simple little effects. Look at the cloud for shape. Look at this light. Look at this through light and going through to the shadow. A little bit of slightly lighter shadow colors, which we call the form shadow, giving it form. Okay? And look at different ways to uh, give the textures to that to that particular cloud. Look for a side that is more built up. Look for a side that flies away. Remember that you know any good painting has movement to it, so it's good to add a lot of movement to it. Okay, and have a lot of fun painting. Look for more of our technique DVDs, uh, and we're going to be painting a lot of sunrises and sunsets with you, and some other in some more advanced clouds. And then I have some that's coming. Uh, I have one that's already done on trees. I have some that are coming on rocks and some that are coming on water. So we have a lot more to paint together. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you. And I'll see you next time here at the Jansen Art Studio. Till then, paint some clouds. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.